It was a nightmare. I was a living nightmare. I lost, like I said, I lost everything. Uh, my name is Justin, 29 years old. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee, born and raised. I had a good childhood growing up. Um, strict upbringing. Mom and dad were both pretty strict. I guess around 12 or 13, I started rebelling uh, pretty hard um, just because I wasn't able to do things. So it's like I would watch all my friends be able to play and all that and I wasn't able to. So I kind of rebelled. Um, I started sneaking out and uh, just getting in trouble in school. Um, my mom would get phone calls from them, just me acting out and being class clown all that. And uh, that just kind of went on into around 15 or 16. That's when I started like smoking weed, smoking cigarettes. My mom fell into a depression, a deep depression around that age. And I kind of used that to my full advantage. Um, she stayed in her room most of the time and uh, she was just real down. So that was, I saw it as a golden opportunity to sneak out and hang out with my friends and all that. And I did that. My second semester of my junior year, um, I uh, got out of school. Uh, I left and my mom said that either I had to work or get a job or work or stay in school. So I picked to work and uh, so I, I dropped out. I got a job 40 hours a week making $10 an hour and uh, at 16 that wasn't a good idea for me. I ended up working Monday through Friday but as soon as I got off on Friday I was buying a hotel for the weekend and partying. I ended up getting my GD at 18 and um, I was pretty happy with that. And uh, I was gonna, my whole plan was to join the military. That was gonna be my career path. That ended up falling through. I missed the test by one point, was just devastated and gave up. I was drinking pretty heavy. Like to be 18, 19 years old, I was drinking pretty heavy. And uh, as I got to 21, that's when I started trying like the harder drugs. I got into cocaine and uh, I shot up for the first time, uh, heroin, uh, shot up bath salts and stuff like that. Just just was going nowhere uh, pretty quick. And then uh, my grandma ended up saying that I could come stay with her. And uh, that kind of, I think it saved my life. And uh, so I went and stayed with her uh, for probably six, seven months, was working on and off, but just didn't seem to have a goal, a future really in my head, like didn't have a plan. So my dad said, hey, you can come up here and stay with me for two weeks. I ended up going up there and he said, if you find a job, you can stay permanently. And that was in Spring Hill, Tennessee. So that's what I ended up finding a job at Logan's Roadhouse and uh, started working there. And that's where I ended up meeting my wife, um, my best friend. I fell in love instantly with her. Um, life was great at first. Um, like I stopped drinking as much. I didn't, wasn't doing any hard drugs or nothing. Um, ended up just, just trying to spend as much time as I could with her. And uh, that lasted for probably two years. It started just, I started partying again, started getting comfortable, not paying as much attention to her. Just slowly went downhill. Uh, for a couple of years, we moved to Alabama. We ended up splitting up for a while because I ended up falling into uh, methamphetamine. And uh, I used that hard for about a year and a half. And like, she wasn't a user, so there was no way it was gonna work. It was a very difficult time. I fell into a deep depression myself and just got farther into drugs. Another time in my life, I didn't have plans, didn't have a future. Um, didn't didn't want to live, really, because I'd lost my best friend, my wife. I just watched my life like just come out from under me slowly but surely I remember just the darkness closing in on me and uh, I ended up watching like my best friend just move on with her life because I wasn't showing her the attention that she deserves and um, ended up just losing everything I didn't want to live anymore I was asking God why like he couldn't deliver me from this I didn't understand it until later on when I realized that God gave me blessings uh, he gave me my wife, he gave me a good job, he gave me a house and all that, and I took them all for granted. Prior to coming here, um, I went to my mom's house, um, and uh, we were trying to find places to take me because I wanted help. Like I said, I'd lost everything. I didn't want to live anymore. She's like, just come stay with me for a little bit. We'll try to find a place. I called every rehab I could think of um, in the phone book. I bet it was about 15 or 20 of them, and I couldn't afford it. My insurance didn't have insurance, so none of them would take me. The ones that would take me were like 15, 20,000. I knew I couldn't have that, so I started just losing hope for real. Like, just got down. I was like, I'm just going to drink myself to death because by that time, I was drinking every single day, all day long. Um, I'd wake up just sick. I, my, my withdrawals were just horrible. I was just maintaining my habit and it was it was a nightmare. I was a living nightmare. I lost, like I said, I lost everything. I ended up getting a hold of Brian Pope here at Teen Challenge and um, he ended up talking to my mom because I was so out of it. They said that if I went and detoxed for a week and uh, 
got my withdrawals and all that checked and I, I could I'd have a bed here waiting on me. When I got to the hospital, the doctor said that he didn't see, he didn't see how I was alive. Like my withdrawals were so bad and at my weight, like they had to give me so much medicine just to get my nerves in shock or in check. Um, like I went to shock on the table. I remember like before I went out of it, like I remember looking at my mom and my sister and they're crying and uh, I just couldn't believe how my life had gotten here. Like uh, how I just allowed to keep going and going and going. So um, I detoxed, I came here to Teen Challenge. Um, at first when I got here, I didn't think I'd make it. Um, it was the rules, the structure, the structure I was used to and all that it was just, it was just surrendering myself. That was my biggest problem uh, because I felt like I had to be in control of every situation, even though every situation that I controlled like fell through, it, it did not work. About two months in, like I, I surrendered, I stopped trying to fight the program and just let it start working on me. And I know that God has been with me throughout this process because I got my divorce papers. I thought somehow when I came here that maybe me coming here would change my wife's mind about divorcing me, but I ended up getting the divorce papers and it, it devastated me, it broke my heart because like I said, I thought we were gonna be able to reconcile, but my sin had consequences. Like she did not, she did not deserve to be treated as such and neglected. And uh, I did that, so I had to accept that, but that was a very hard blow, but I dealt with it. And then um, the next week, uh, November 17th, uh, I was put in the office and told my aunt, or told that my aunt had overdosed and she had died. And uh, that was that was a huge blow for me. Uh, she was like a big sister. I think that's why I'm like, I, I really dug deep after that. And uh, I knew like, I, I have to do this. God has given me chance after chance, and I don't know how many more I have. So I knew that I had to be obedient stay in this program and, and gain as much as I can so that I can have a future. Since coming here, we just came back from Costa Rica uh, a couple weeks ago, which was amazing. It, it's just been an amazing journey just seeing how, how God it can change me and how He has changed me. Um, I was baptized last night at First Assembly. I can't wait to see what God has in store for me. Um, a verse I stand on is Matthew 24, 35, and it says, uh, the sky and earth will wear out and fade away before one word I speak loses its power or fails to accomplish its purpose. And I know God has a purpose for me. He has plans to prosper me, not to harm me, and plans to give me hope in the future. And I'm excited to see what that future is um, because He saved my life. So I want to make sure that I do what I'm supposed to do and I'm obedient to Him and I spread the good news of how He's changed my life and maybe it can change others. Mm -hmm.